Hey, what's up you guys? It's Emily, a little reptile queen. I'm here with Ashika. Ashika. And today we're gonna be doing a video, the truth about exotics. So this is our first part of a five part series. Today we're gonna be talking about kind of like the truth the, about exotics. So I got it started with reptiles when I was 12 years old. My first little reptile was a leopard gecko. This here's Leo. He was my first ever pet reptile. Look how cute he is. <laughs> Look at his little face. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't matter. <laughs> anyway, so this is Leo. He's my leopard gecko. I got Leo when I was 12 years old, and um, now he's about 12 years old. I got him as a rehome, and these guys can live up to 25 years. So I'll pass this wow. to Ashika. And then let me talk about my next. He's so soft. He's so soft. I'll talk about my next um, exotic animal. This is Berm. Berm is a ball python. So these guys are pretty common. So cute! Oh my god, look at his little face! He's so, <laughs> He's so cute! This is really Shika's first time kind of seeing and interacting with exotic. I think it's pretty exciting and fun for her. Yeah, I've never really, like, I've always watched videos on exotics, but I've never really interacted with them physically, so this is a new experience for me. When I first got these animals, I was young. I was like 12 years old with this one, 15 with this one. I really didn't know what I was doing. So I'll be honest with you guys, um, I had some downfalls. Obviously, these reptiles, they require really specific care, and nowadays, there's a lot of information about them out there but when I was young it felt like I really didn't have much guidance when I was 12 and I got this little leopard gecko I didn't know much about their care their husbandry requirements and even with this ball pythons they would go off food or they'd have trouble shedding just little things that was such easy fix to do with their temperature and their humidity that I now know and I'm really lucky that these animals fully recovered even though in the first beginning years I really was doing them wrong by not fully knowing how to take care of them with berm he would have issues with stuck shed he would have issues with shedding and that really has to do with the humidity level he would go off food which had to do with it not being hot enough in his enclosure and same with Leo. If it wasn't hot enough for him, he would also go off food. So now, after 10 years, I'm a lot smarter, obviously, and I've done a lot more research, and I know a lot more than I did back then. These animals are in a lot better care and health. You know, like, I've noticed that a lot of these animals, you kind of see, like, I see a lot of videos on exotic animals. Like, I've watched a lot of videos because, I don't know, they're so interesting, but they never really talk about the care of these animals or, like, how difficult they are or how what they require what they don't require and the temperature like you're talking about how most of your animals are uh rehomes right yeah exactly so that's kind of where i'm at now sperm i bought from a pet store leo i actually got as a rehome a lot of the animals that i have now i have about 60 animals 60 pets Oh my god. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, not all reptiles. I have a lot of invertebrates like tarantulas and I have some other kind of small pets. Leo I got as a rehome. So a kind of school friend of ours gave us Leo when I was 12. And at this point now, most of my animals are coming to me. Either people are reaching out to me and just wanting to give me their animals or on sites like Kijiji or Kassin and our Facebook. These animals aren't neglected or abused. They're just needing new homes. That's kind of the biggest thing with these animals is that they need someone who can commit to them really really long term they just end you up know, needing homes this kind of reminds me of the logan paul incident where he got this a uh, pet pig and then he left it like he got it when it was a like tiny baby and th these pigs like grow really big yeah and then he abandoned it and people found it in a field in california and it had a life-threatening disease and it was so sad that's crazy like, yeah there's so, so many, many there's so many pets out there that people will get when they're small and they're cute and they're manageable and especially like the mini pig teacup pig craze people get these little pigs thinking that they stay itsy bitsy tiny baby pigs forever and that's just simply not the case that's not realistic um pigs get super huge and even like the teacup mini ones they're often 100 pounds plus so it's just crazy and especially with pigs they're so smart they're like the third smartest animal in the world they're comparable to dogs you know snakes might not be as complex in the same sense of being social and same stuff as like a pig but they still require a lot of care and love and just time and commitment to money all yeah, I've heard about how like pigs are super affectionate. Yeah, and you can like train them to do tricks and they love you and they'll like recall. Like pigs are just so smart. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. You know, with my business, because I do educational reptile shows where I'm kind of showing kids and adults my animals my pets and it creates i don't know it like over glorifies the animals it over glorifies these pets because i see my pets as being so mellow and nice and just awesome 
and then now the kids whenever I'm done the birthday party they say oh my gosh mom oh my gosh dad I really want a gecko or a snake or whatever I bring a tortoise and it's just it's kind of a shame and I'm a little bit you know worried about that and I try to emphasize to the kids that these are a long commitment pet and a lot of these rehome situations are coming from parents buying their kids these animals and then them not being able or wanting to keep them they get bored after a short amount of time after a number of years and these animals have really long lifespans like Leo here can live up to 25 years Sperm here can live 40 plus years the tortoise can live you know depends on the species 50 to you know 200 years kind of crazy I I would hope that everyone who wants to get an animal like this can commit the years to them but it just simply is not the case and yeah there's big craze about different types of animals like axolotls are super popular unfortunately they're illegal here in BC I know baby turtles are also equally as popular and then they get into these big turtles and it's a big big commitment and you know the worst part about these exotics is that when you go get like a brochure from PetSmart it says that their lifespan is like five to eight years yeah, because of the poor care. Yeah, exactly. Like, them. if you follow the care guide that PetSmart gives you, then yeah, your lizard will only live five to eight years, which is such a shame when they couldn't live up to 25 years. Like, Leo's already 12 years old. Like, he's doing great. So uh, He looks super healthy. Yeah, he's got a big chunky tail. Yeah, yeah look at his tail. Yeah, he's so cute. <laughs> so awesome. I know I mentioned the epidemic of rehomes. I know I don't I don't take in rescues so I don't really see many like I don't ever see sick or neglected animals I just don't have the space or the time or the resources I don't have the money to spend on exotic vets and unfortunately there isn't really any exotic vets around me but I have a buddy in the lower mainland and he has a really awesome reptile facility uh, a greenhouse where he takes in a lot of rescues so almost on a daily basis he'll post on his Facebook different rescues that he's gotten that are sometimes in perfectly good shape because they just you know they just need a home or the worst like sometimes these animals will come in like half dead so there's really sick bearded dragons he sees there's really sick chameleons he sees he's really sick leopard geckos leopard geckos like this that have clogged cloacas or goo in their eye or some sort of mouth rot and they're just like a whole array of issues that really is quite easy to prevent just by having pro proper husbandry but he sees these animals on a regular daily basis we're lucky we have him because he's taking in a lot of these like animals in need Whereas I don't have that capability right now and there isn't anyone around me who has a facility where they can take in reptiles like that. So what you're saying is that most of these animals that you have right now are rehomes? Yes. And like, because I thought these animals were like crazy expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, they definitely can be. If you were to buy all of these animals that I have directly from breeders or from pet stores, it would be very, very expensive. I've kind of realized that if I, <laughs> if I just, I'm looking on uh, cast on their Kijiji Facebook and there's animals that I can incorporate into my business I can give a good loving home to then I can reach out to those people and see if their animals are still need a buck a good home They would be expensive getting them from someone else usually helps reduce costs, which is kind of nice a like win-win yeah. you're giving an animal a good home a new home and you're also paying less than a you know box pet store like PetSmart would be charging for animals that are really you know probably unwell but it's so sad that like all these animals like most of these animals are probably neglected or abused because of improper care yeah especially guidance. when like PetSmart or wherever else is just recommending things that aren't suitable for these animals like I know when I first got berm I didn't know what kind of substrate, like something so easy and like overlooked, like what kind of bedding he should be kept on. Like when I first got him, I kept him on Aspen, which Aspen is not suitable for ball pythons. It's really not suitable for most snakes unless they're like an arid kind of snake. Now I keep him on Cocoa Huff, so now he's way better off. It holds humidity and he's able to be nice and healthy and have, you he know, healthy so skin and stuff. He looks so shiny. He's so shiny. <laughs> Awesome. Like his underbelly is so shiny. Yeah, it's a little pink. I think he's gonna be going in a shed soon, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting how you can tell it's he's in a shed. Yeah, soon. that's all we have to say today about the truth about exotics. Um, we have a couple other videos coming out in the series. The next three are gonna be care guides to some of the more common reptiles that people are keeping in captivity. Stay tuned for those videos. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Please tell me what animals you'd be interested in owning and how much research you found for them and yeah be sure to check out my other social media facebook instagram tiktok all under little reptile queen goodbye <laughs> leo oh my gosh <laughs>